I'm very passionate about sleep. My, um, my son was diagnosed um, quite early at the age of two. And um, that was in the early 2000s. So you can imagine there was absolutely, um, I wouldn't say nothing on ground. I would say there were minimal um, centers or places that you could take your child to, to, you know, to for support. And most of us in the 2000s benefited from inclusion because there were no special centers like you know, Patrick's is today. And our children had to be in classroom with their um, mates and their, you know, their peers. So for us, neurodiversity was quite um, a plus for many of us. And I would say that a lot of children that were born in the, two, in the 1990s, 1980s, that did not have, um, that were exposed to therapy early, did quite well. So I'm a proponent of inclusion, even though I run an exclusive um, center or an exclusive school. But I would always, you know, want our children to be included because they are truly neurodiverse. My son didn't speak till he was about five. And he was in the classroom with his peers and because he was not very hyperactive and he did not have a lot of uh, behavioral issues, they could manage him in the classroom environment. He struggled through primary school. He really struggled because he was awkward. It was odd. He wore his clothes differently. If his um, pants is skewed to one side, he, would, he wouldn't know how to straight, straighten it. But as time went on and then um, a beautiful thing happened. In the school where he was, they were very, very good with music and they did a concert every end of term and they included him in the concert. And the repetition and the practice in those concerts helped to develop my son's social engagement, even though he still struggled with social communication and he still struggled with understanding social cues. So for, for him at that time, we, we struggled through primary school. But one thing was apparent. Two things I took away from his involvement in primary school. He was able to decipher languages, even though he struggled with speech. So if they give him an assignment in something like Yoruba, which is our local language, he would excel in Yoruba because his thoughts pattern was in his uh, the way he saw language was in patterns. And when he tells me now about how easy it is to learn Igbo and Hausa and how Yoruba is difficult to learn because the Yoruba's pattern is not consistent, but the other part, the others had uh, a consistent pattern. And I found that really intriguing. And that is what we mean by neurodiversity. That's what we mean by they are neurodiverse and they are different. So from then on, we started to look at areas such as um, where he would excel. And the place of excellence for him was in ICT, where the things don't change. Languages, he wouldn't be able to speak it, but he would be able to understand it. So that was just magic for us. In the area of music and in the area of mathematics, mathematics for him was like a walkover. If we're going out um, and, and he needed something to keep him busy. He would take a pen and a paper and he would start to solve mathematical equations. So maths was just was just like a hobby for him. So immediately we knew um, very quickly that he would excel very well in things that are mathematical, things that are methodological, things that had patterns. So we worked on that. So going into secondary school, he struggled even more with bullying because a lot of secondary school people just found people that are different. You know, the way he talks, the way he's, he's, he's literal in his language, his facial expression is placid. It does not demonstrate his, um, his um, social needs or his social interaction. He walks in a certain manner, very stiff and, you know, so he struggled, we, we struggled with bullying in school because he was different. And then going into um, year nine, he started to choose his subjects. And that was when everything changed for him. 